In this video, we'll be taking apart the Samsung Galaxy A26 5G. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. Starting off, we'll remove the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a gray rubber gasket around the opening. At this point, heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a better look at the glass backplate. The camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying it off. So you don't have to take apart the phone to replace that. There are now 16 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Taking a look at the top plastic motherboard cover, we can see antenna lines drawn which are the light gray color lines, as well as the NFC antenna. There is also graphite film to help transfer heat. Taking a look at the other side, we see that the graphite film extends over the motherboard. This is the speaker assembly. At this point the battery cable can be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. And just to note, this flex cable connects the main board to the subboard, as well as the flex cable for the screen. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and the speaker assembly itself, giving you access to disconnecting the flex cable for the screen, at which point you would lift up and peel off the flex cable for the screen from the subboard, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply a new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. The coaxial cables can be disconnected by just popping them off. There is a single Phillips screw holding down the motherboard. Taking a look at the main board, we see the 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, the 50 megapixel primary, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. As for the camera connectors, those can be disconnected by just popping them off. The LED flash is located here, and there's a secondary microphone on the top. Looking at the other side, we have a better look at the 13 megapixel front facing camera, the ambient light sensor, the SIM and memory card reader, as well as a graphite pad on the back shield to help transfer heat. We can also see the two other connectors for the cameras. Once the graphite film has been peeled back, we see thermal pads on top of these chips, as well as the processor. Here's a better look at the processor with the thermal pad removed. To remove the fingerprint scanner and power button, there are two Phillips screws which need to be removed that are holding on a metal cover holding it in place. At this point, the rubber gasket and button assembly can be lifted out of the frame. Here's a look at that.
To remove the battery, there is a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. This pull pouch for the battery is like the previous generation pull pouches and not like the newer one they use on the A56. This is the 5000 mAh battery. Now that the battery has been removed, we can see white graphite film over the 3D layer of graphite underneath, which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard to help transfer heat. So there is no vapor chamber on this phone. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard, we see the primary microphone located here, as well as a charger port with a rubber gasket around it. And here's a look at the other side. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner which is held down with some adhesive, so if you wanted to replace that, just apply some heat and gently pry it off. There's a mesh filter and rubber gasket over the speaker opening on the frame, as well as the microphone openings. Also on this phone, if you were to accidentally insert a SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you don't need to worry since both the filters and the microphones are seated above the holes and they wouldn't get damaged. To replace the flex cable for the volume keys, just gently peel it off the frame and lift up and pull out the metal bracket which is holding it in place. As for the volume button, that can be pulled out. And finally, the earpiece speaker is located on top, which is also held on with some adhesive. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 9 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back cover. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.